Variation of parameters is another method for determining particular solutions to a second order linear differential equation. And the nice thing about this method is that it works much more generally than the method of undetermined coefficients from the previous two videos. So we begin with a second order linear differential equation. And from it, we can consider the homogeneous equation, the associated homogeneous equation. And the solution to that gives us the complementary function, which is really just uh, any general linear combination of any two linearly independent solutions, y1 and y2, of the homogeneous equation. OK, so the idea, the, the method of variation of parameters, is to try and build a, a solution, a particular solution, yp, which is of this form. So the, the variables here, the y1 and the y2, are just these two functions uh, coming from the complementary function. And the u1 and the u2 are just arbitrary functions. And the idea is that we're going to try and solve for these two functions, the, the u1 and the u2. Because if we can solve for them, then we can find the, the particular solution. OK, so we begin with, um, with a, a, a particular solution of this form. And we're going to try and find some conditions on it. So firstly, if this is our particular solution, or the form of our particular solution, then the, the form of the first derivative is given here. So you can see each term is uh, interpreted as a function because we are um, uh, differentiating this term using the product rule and this term by the product rule, because that's how we get these two uh, terms here and here. OK, uh, then we make a big assumption, and this is one of the major assumptions, and that is that uh, this expression here is going to be equal to 0. So the derivative of u1 prime times y1 plus u2 prime times y2 is equal to 0. So that is, if I combine this term with this one, it's equal to 0. So uh, if that's equal to 0, then the first derivative has a nice and easy expression. It's just this. And if that's the first derivative, then we can calculate the second derivative here at the bottom, which is, uh, which is just given here. Y if you differentiate this first derivative, you'll get this expression here. OK, um, now that we've computed uh, these, uh, the, the first derivative um, and the second derivative, we can actually plug it straight back into our differential equation. So plugging it into our differential equation is going to give us this. And this is really going to give us the conditions that we need to find the u1 and the u2. OK, so one simply replaces the, um, the, for instance, the y double prime here by the actual expression. And also, similarly, the, the y prime here by its actual expression, and also the yp by what it is, uh, which we know is u1, y1, plus u, u2, y2. OK, and then when you, when you do that um, and simplify, the resulting expression simplifies to this. And you can check that yourself. And then we make a big observation here, which is that the, um, these terms here, y1 is a, um, it's a solution to the homogeneous equation. So right here, this term here becomes 0. So for that reason, we can cross it out and we have 0 here. And likewise here, um, the, this term here, since y2 is also a solution to the homogeneous equation, this becomes exactly equal to 0. And so the point is that we, we get actually uh, a lot of uh, simplification so that the equation we end up with is just th this one. OK, great. So um, combining this equation here with this one up here gives us a linear system. And that linear system is just this one here. OK. So we have a linear system um, of uh, functions. And we're interested in solving it. So the, if given a linear system, the, the straightforward thing to do is to convert it into a matrix equation, which is exactly this one. You'll see if you multiply uh, y1 by u1 prime, you get this term here. And uh, y2 by u2 prime, uh, you get this one here. Great. Uh, so then we have uh, this matrix equation. And uh, the, the interesting thing that's appearing here is that this matrix is exactly the Ronskian of y1 and y2. So this Ronskian is has been defined um, in another video, uh, but it, just to to um, uh, speak about it, it 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 gives a certain matrix, a determinant of a certain matrix here, 
y1, y2, uh, y1 prime, y2 prime. OK, but that it's not really relevant to what I'm saying. So the point is that the determinant of this matrix is the Ronskin. And the important thing to uh, recall about the Ronskin is that since y1 and y2, they're solutions to a second order homogeneous equation. And moreover, they're linearly independent. This means, this is the same thing, but it means that the Ronskin is going to be non-zero for all values, um, for all x. It, it never attains the value x on the interval that we're considering the differential equation. Great, so that means that it has an inverse for any value of x. So that inverse, we can then multiply, we can consider what, uh, so th this matrix has an inverse, so uh, we can then write, uh, we can solve for this part of the equation by multiplying both sides by the inverse. So then we just get this equation here. Okay, good. Now the nice thing is about two by two matrices um, is that we can express the inverse really easily uh, using something called Kramer's rule. And that is this here. So the inverse of a two by two matrix, in our case, this two by two matrix is just given right here. Okay. So you take one over the determinant, and then you, uh, r you just swap around a few variables, and this gives you the formula. OK, so then using that formula, um, replacing this by this, you can just uh, easily get that uh, uh, the, the matrix equation that we're interested in reduces to this. And then just writing this out component-wise, all we're going to get is uh, these two equations at the bottom here. Okay, good. And these are really the two equations that we are interested in. Um, there is a slight error. I should just mention this is supposed to be two. Okay, so now these two equations here um, give us the conditions on u1 and u2. Remember, we're trying to find a particular solution, uh, a particular solution of a specific form, which we will see now, namely a particular solution of this form. Okay. So we need to find what is the, the, the u1 and what is the u2. But then these two expressions that we've just derived, the uh, u1 prime up here, if we just integrate here and integrate here, we will be able to find the, um, these u1 and u2, and then we can find the particular solution. OK, great. So um, that's really the whole method, is that these two formulas up here will allow us to uh, find the u1 and the u2, and then we can find the particular solution. So let's just recap the general method. We're given a general differential equation like this in this form. So um, the coefficient of the second derivative here is equal to 1. And then um, we solve the associated homogeneous equation here. And that always is represented in this way here. So the complementary function, the general solution to the homogeneous equation is just c1 times y1 plus c2 times y2. And then once we're there, we can use these two functions, y1 and y2, to find a particular solution in this way. And then we just note that the, uh, the u1 and the u2 can be solved with these two formulas. OK, so let's solve uh, a particular example just so that we can see how this method works. So here is a differential equation. We're asked to solve this differential equation over this interval. And so we know we need to do two things. Firstly, we need to uh, consider the homogeneous, uh, the associated homogeneous equation here. And that is just going to be y double prime plus y equals 0. And to solve this equation, we consider the auxiliary equation. And here we get a complex root, which is uh, just plus or minus i. And then we've already seen how to solve um, uh, second order linear differential equations with constant coefficients, which are homogeneous. Um, the two solutions here are going to be sine x and cos x. And what this is giving us is that the general solution here is just going to be c1 sine x plus c2 cos x. OK, great. So we found the complementary function. And now the variation of parameters is, is going to um, 
uh, give us the particular solution. So what we're going to do is solve, we're going to find the particular solution um, and it's going to be of this form u1 plus y1 uh, u1 times y1 plus u2 times y2 uh, and here I just mentioned that these two functions here this is going to be the y1 and this is going to be the y2 so we just abbreviate y1 and y2 like this okay good so we have the two formulas uh, the two formulas are that u1 Let's just go back up. So u1 prime here is going to be exactly equal to negative y2 g of x um, uh, divided by the Ronskian of y1 and y2. So we need to do two things here first. We need to compute what is the Ronskian, and we need to isolate what is g of x. Because we already know what y1 and y2 are. Okay, so let's write down actually all, the, all of this uh, data here. So we know what y1 and y2 are. Let's figure out what is the Ronskian. The, the Ronskian of y1 and y2 is just the determinant y1, y2, y1 prime, y2 prime. And here, this is just going to be the determinant of sine of x, cos of x, cos of x, negative sine of x. And here this just becomes negative sine squared x minus cos squared x, and this is just negative 1. Okay. So now, just using the formula that we have found, um, uh, we, we know that u1 prime here, just to go back up again, is negative y2 g of x divided by the Ronskin. So let's write that out. Negative y2 g of x divided by the Ronskin here of y1 and y2. So let's just be sure that our uh, linear differential equation is in the form that we need. Well, it is because the coefficient here is 1, so that's good. And then we can immediately see that this is the g of x. And uh, so we have all the ingredients necessary now. OK, good. So here, let's just plug in everything we have. The y2 here is exactly cos x. So this is just going to be negative cos x times uh, g of x. But g of x is just sec x. And we have this all divided by the Ronskian um, y1, of, uh, y1 and y2, which is negative 1. Now, sec x is just 1 over cos x. So that negative cos x times sec x is just going to be negative 1. And so this is negative 1 over 1. And so it's just equal to 1. Fantastic. And immediately, you'll be able to see that since u1 prime is equal to 1, we get that just u1 can be taken to be x. And it's as easy as that. All right, let's figure out what is uh, u2 prime. So u2 prime also has a formula, and it's this formula up here. Uh, so it's y1 times g divided by the round skin. Okay. So we take we want here y1 times g of x divided by the round skin. Y1 is sine x, so we have sine x g of x is nothing other than sec x. And we divide this by negative 1. So we get here. Now, um, uh, just to say something about this, sine x times sec x is just going to be tan x because of the same reason that sec x is just uh, 1 over cos x. So this all simplifies to negative tan x. And we can again also solve that equation. So um, that means that u2 prime is equal to negative tan x. And then um, you can integrate tan x. It's one of the standard integrals, but this will just end up being um, uh, natural log of uh, cos x, absolute value cos x. OK, great. So that gives us our, um, our functions uh, 
u2 and u1. We've, that's what we've just solved here. So we have the u1 now. We have the u2. And so we can just plug it in and get our particular solution. So our particular solution ends up just being uh, yp is equal to um, the u1, which we've calculated to be x, times y1, which is sine x. And then uh, we're going to add that to u2. So uh, u2 is going to be um, uh, this function here, times y2, which is cos x. So we just have cos x times the natural log of absolute value cos x. OK, so that's our particular solution. Now, um, we have already computed what is the complementary function. It's up here. So that we've actually solved the general equation. So our final solution. is just uh, y is equal to uh, yc plus yp, just a the complementary function here plus a particular solution. And this is just c1 sine x plus c2 cos x plus our particular solution, which is x sine x plus cos x uh, natural log absolute value cos x. And that's it. OK, so that illustrates the method of variation of parameters. It really is the same every single time. Um, one takes uh, a guess, uh, not a guess, sorry, one, one tries to solve for yp in this form. And then we have two very nice formulas for that, for calculating what is u1 and what is u2 in this expression. And those two formulas are just these over here. OK. Thank you.